guys, I think this is it. I have got to stop deciding what I'm going to do because I never do it. <laughs> I come up with these, these ideas. Okay, I need to do this and that and the other and I forget things. Like today was supposed to be like the first half-ish of June to break up the all the books I've read because I, I have read a lot in this second half but I forgot that the first half I was gone for uh, Tuesday through Wednesday eight days and I read almost nothing during the first so over a week almost nothing so I mean I yeah it might be slightly long sure but I it just seems silly so I've been wanting to do this mid-year freak out tag oh wait a minute I, I was supposed to freak oh, sorry I forgot to freak out hang on ah! okay there we go the dog you should see their faces they're like what 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 <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry Neville but it was fun yeah lick the paw so um <laughs> yeah I, I got issues guys I got issues so um <laughs> yeah no more deciding what I'm going to do for me because it clearly gets changed. I get all these other ideas and I've been wanting to do this mid-year freak out thing, right? And then I decided, you know what? Yeah, I want to do that. That's what I feel like doing. So I'm going to do it because I can. This is, this is my space and I get to do, I mean, it's not my space, but this is my little space on YouTube and I can do what I want. Thank you very much. So that's what we're, we're going to do. We're going to talk about this mid-year freak out thing because I mean, it is almost just slightly fast, but almost exactly mid-year. So, you know, or wait a minute, is it slightly before? I think it's technically, you got to go all the way through June. So this one's technically slightly before, but even still, it's just slightly we're, we're good. We're good. So, um, I have all the stuff and a total mess over here and down here to, to go through because, you know, you're supposed to choose a book. The only thing that makes me feel better about the fact that I have not chosen a book is the fact that I don't think I saw a single one of these videos where someone only chose one book for everything. So if they can do it, so can I. And again, my spot, my rules. I think my glasses need cleaning, but I'm not dealing with that right now. So, da -da 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 -ba -da -ba -da -da. freak out number one. Why is this a freak out? I, I, I really honestly don't understand why this is called freak out because I, there's only one question that might possibly be a freak out. So it, it's kind of confusing. So we're going to do this thing. Okay. What is the best book you've read so far this year? Okay. There it is. Okay. So I have technically four, and they're all different genres. Three of them are closely related genres, and one is totally off the mark. Um, two take place during World War II. Two are contemporary. Um, two are by authors I've never read fiction from before, and two are by authors I really enjoy. So it's kind of, it feels like it's reasonable for all four. So the first one I would say was Good Night, Mr. Tom. I absolutely loved this book. I just, oh, I want to read more by her. I hope I like her other books, but Oh, wow. So, Willie is an evacuee from London. He has a horribly abusive mother who uses um, religion. I would call it false religion, um, as opposed to biblical religion, because, you know, reasons. But she is a very mentally disturbed person, and she uses religion as a whip, both literally and figuratively, to just terrorize her child and he gets sent away which is it, th this opening bit has some similarities to a book that I'm working on but it's completely opposite too and I just loved seeing how some of the ideas that I had were they going to work well even though they're different from what happened in here I got a feeling that it will work and so that was kind of cool but this Mr. Tom is just the neatest guy 
I loved him so much. And now I feel like he might actually fit another character. I don't know. There are two things in this book that I think parents should be aware of. One I wasn't concerned about. The other one I didn't see as necessary, but it wasn't over the top or a big problem. The, the first one was a, a woman nursing her child. And she just lets it all out. And this kid is just a little startled by that. It's actually a very good thing in this situation. And it was handled very delicately, but frankly, that was good. Actually, there were three because I'm thinking of another one. Then also, um, one of his friends tells Willie about sex. And he got most of it right. It's very frankly spoken and done as if this is not a bad thing. It's not, you know, this is this is grown up stuff and this is what happens. And and it it's so well written that a child isn't gonna get a huge education that he should be getting from his parents, but he is gonna get a couple things wrong <laughs> because it isn't it's precisely correct, and I think that's an actually a really good learning thing for parents to talk with kids. See how see how well he handled it, and how. But guess what? I mean, look at that thing. That isn't right. So you can't always trust what your friends tell you, even if they're not just trying to shock you. So it, that's a great talking lesson, whatever thing. Even though I don't think it needed to be in there, and yet on the other hand, it kind of did because of how messed up this kid's mother was and how much she messed him up. But then, and all of a sudden I have something in my eye. Then there was a third one where he and his friend, who they've been just like buddies all along, are changing. And um, she pulls her shirt off and he notices that she is a girl because he pulled off the shirts. And so that absolutely wasn't necessary. It was still handled really well. It was not over, you know, it just kind of made him uncomfortable. And I understand what the author was doing. I just disagree with it. So really, yeah, one of my top favorites of the year. I can't decide which of these is a favorite. Um, I'm going to try by the time I get done with here. Also, Emma and the Reasons. You have three roommates who are called the Reasons because they all have reasons why they are single. Um, Emma would like to be married, but she is you know, has focused so much on children in the foster care system that she takes care of, and she's very happy and content. And then, all of a sudden, people keep trying to match make. All the marrieds, their friends who have gotten off and gotten married, are matchmaking, and they can't figure out why. And then they find out why, and everything ensues. And it's a beautiful story that had an ending that I both I think some readers might not love, but I not only loved, I keep saying both, but it's wrong. I not only loved, but I crave in books and rarely get. So, uh, okay, right now I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to call it. I think I'm going to say this one's my favorite, but uh, the road before us was also really, really good. It's a uh, gal who's. She's partially responsible for a former Hollywood star and her husband losing millions in a Ponzi type scheme. And so they're doing a documentary of how this gal became a, a big star back way back when. And, you know, in the 50s, 60s. And, yeah, um, there's so many things that get that get brought out in this one. And this one has some elements of this book in it. So I read this at the first part of this month, really loved it. I'll be talking about it more, but that one, I, it, I really loved it, but I'm, I'm going to say this one is not definitely not my favorite, although it's right up there. And then also listening Valley, another world war two, um, it, it comes after Celia's house, but it is a standalone as well. 
kind of funny, but it was also one of my favorites. Maybe even more than Catherine Wentworth, maybe. Um, so probably more, but I'm, I'm going to go with Emma and the Reasons. I'm going to call that my favorite for the year. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't expect to, to be able to do that. And the more I talked about it, the more I remembered how much I just loved that book. I had so many good books this year though. Um, so there's that fun. What's the best sequel you've read so far? Okay. So for sequel, I'm going to go the easy route. It's kind of not fair. I reread all the Polifaxes this year. I mean, that just like, but I've read them so many times. So I decided to go for a sequel that I haven't read before, you know, from books I haven't read before. So I'm going to go with, and I'm calling this The Last Chronicle of Varset as that sequel. It's really any of them. Um, the second book, Bar Marchester Towers, is my least favorite. But that's not to say I didn't love it. But these were all so good. I'm... Uh, but yeah, it's, it's still, it's so good. I'm, I'm loving it and I'm hoping that John Eames is not going to be an idiot. Just let me dream. Okay. Just let me have that dream. All right. So the next one is a new release you haven't read yet, but you want to, let me get the title. The book is The Comfort of Ghosts, which I think is a really odd title because it is Maisie Dobbs 18 by Catherine Winspear. And, okay, I love Maisie Dobbs. It, it, she just always takes her, she, there, she's she got this slight, uh, it just like borders on mysticism that I, I'm almost uncomfortable with and she pulls back just in time. And it's kind of weird. It There's a reason why it's there. You know, she was trained by someone who had a very Eastern side to her as a kid. So there's that. So it feels like she takes the best of that, you know, choosing to be reflective and thoughtful about things and apply it to her life without absorbing all the, the religious and uh, new agey stuff that goes with it. She focuses on the parts that apply to her and kind of pushes the rest aside, for which I am grateful because I wouldn't enjoy the books as much, nearly as much if I didn't. I'm so excited about this book. It's not even funny. It might, I think, huh, Of Love and Treason was my most anticipated read for 2024. But this one, I didn't even know was coming out or it would have been my most anticipated read. I found it, I think, in April. So yeah, totally excited about that. Really Okay, so another new release that I have not read yet that I keep forgetting came out. I found out about it during middle grade March. So, and that is um, The Night War by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley, who wrote um, The War That Saved My Life, etc. So I really liked The War That Saved My Life, and I'm really hoping that this will be as good. We're going to, we're going to vote for that <laughs> because I'm like, yee! So, um, I just, as a matter of fact, I just bought it. I went over to Amazon. I'm going to see if it's still on sale. I went over to Amazon and the heart. Yeah, it's, it's not. I got the hard cover yesterday or day before one of the two for like eight bucks. Now it's 16, but I managed to, to snag one. <laughs> and so I'm like score. <laughs> so that was, that was pretty cool. Okay. And then most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Now, this one, this one's tough because I just did that pre-order list, right? And there are some really fun ones on there. No, I'm going to go, maybe the one with something borrowed from Susie Finkbeiner. Uh, that one, her story in there, that might be it. If it's not that, then it's 70 North by Kimberly Woodhouse. <sighs> That's so tough. Bookstore versus cyber crimes. <laughs> I, I'm so bizarre. <laughs> but mm, it's one of those two. Ooh, biggest disappointment. Okay, so here's the deal. I was going to say Lulu's Cafe 
but that was a DNF. Oh, we got a medevac going over. Lord, please be with them, get them there safe. Thank you for medevacs. Who got my husband there safe and alive. So I'm, and my daughter, when, when she had her helicopter down to uh, children's. Yeah, don't tangle with the golf club. You'll lose and you'll bash your head in. Just say it. Mm. Okay, so I, I thought about that one, but I'm like, I'm disappointed that I didn't get to read it because I know I would have loved the story once I got past all that, as long as we didn't have any flashback. I just wasn't taking the chance. So that was a disappointment. And then I was like, no, wooing of a recluse because I, I was like, really expecting this to be this really great story and it turned out to just be like meh there's just nothing there and so I was like oh yeah that one and then I saw this one on my shelf and I was like biggest disappointment and I so expected to love this book I mean Catherine Wentworth is one of my absolute favorites why? Why? Because from about here on, it makes, it's not that I minded it, but it just ended. And I would have loved it if we would have circled back to the story, but it just kind of ended. And that, that, that was the biggest disappointment. Definitely. I don't need that because that's not on here. Okay. So there's that. And then biggest surprise The Housekeeper and the Professor. Guys, this book is just a beautiful, beautiful book. I thought I would probably enjoy it. I mean, the premise, you know, this she's a housekeeper to a professor who only has 80 minutes of memory at a time. And I, th that's, a, that's a really interesting premise. And when I realized that this was not a romance, my heart sang. <laughs> You want to give me warm fuzzies? <laughs> Make it not a romance. <laughs> yeah, because Shatona. Um, this is by like Oko Ogawa or Yo Yoko Ogawa or something. Oh, oh, I know it's Ogawa, but it's like when is Yoko Ogawa? Okay, the housekeeper and the professor. Absolutely beautiful story. Um, I'm sure everybody and their brother knows all about it, and I'm just the only one who didn't. But I have not seen this mentioned on YouTube. It must have been way back when it was published. Only 15 years behind or so ish. Yeah. Beautiful story. Biggest surprise. Absolutely. I all right. The the next one I had messed up. Um I had maybe favorite or new to me author book and I went with one that is it, it that's not the thing. It says Favorite new debut or new to you author and the the book I had for that just but I, I think maybe new author I'm gonna say um maybe this Ryan I, I I'm having a hard time um I've had lots of new authors this year but I can't really call most of them favorites unless maybe Metzler because I haven't read her fiction before so maybe that but um I'm gonna go with Ryan Groden only this far in and I am loving this book I love <laughs> it's really funny I love that what I think are foul words are in German so I'm not even sure <laughs> and I'm kind of glad because I don't even have to think about it. I can just move along because I don't know what that word is and I'm happy about it. But this book, guys, it is so good. And I just realized that I need to order the second one because, um, yeah, I didn't realize there was one until I got to the back of this looking about, yeah. So, yeah. Um, it should have been a giveaway. The Race to Kill Hitler Begins. So I'm suspecting that we're not going to actually kill Hitler in this book. Um, but it's a fascinating, fascinating idea. And I hope that I'm going to keep loving 
this author. Um, I could also say Trollope, except that I have read Dr. Thorne before, so maybe not Trollope. Man, I want to say Trollope. <laughs> Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Whatever. I'm going to put that back up there. I'm in the middle of so many books right now. I'll have to get a stack of them and show you. But, uh, yeah. So, then it says, number eight, newest fictional crush. Okay, guys. I don't do the crush thing. So, I'm just going to go with um, the newest male lead in a book that I really enjoy. And I'm going to go with Marius Quinn by Benedict Dick Brown. He's a new character with a new series and all the fun stuffness that goes with that. And yeah, I really like his character. He's a whole lot of fun. He's a great combination of a little messed up, but not, you know, so flawed that he's annoying and yet not so perfect that he's annoying. So he's just, but he's just charming and a little insecure. Yeah, I, I really like him. I'm going to go with that, even though it's kind of an odd, odd thing. And then maybe my newest favorite character. Now that's tough because I just did Marius and, but I, I stuck with male lead because, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be crushing here. I don't do the crushness, but whatever. So newest favorite character. There's, there's several. So it could be Benny Aldridge. So she was so a lot of fun. She's older and spunky and she's got a little bit of um, dementia kind of creeping in and, you know, it makes things a little interesting, but she's so much fun. Also, I loved Thomas Wingate from The Curate's Awakening in here. He was, he, he's just so honest and sincere. As soon as he is shown where he's dishonest, then he becomes honest. And it's just, he just, he's someone you could really learn from. And there's just, mm, yeah, yeah. Or, I'm sorry, but June in Junebug is just the, they call her June Bud the whole way through. She's just the sweetest thing. I Tonight I had a really hard time stopping. I actually read 10 chapters instead of 5. And I almost finished the book. Because it, this is just so good. And so, you know, there's that one. But then, then there's also like Miss Busby. The Miss Busby Mysteries. Uh, is it Miss Busby Investigates? I don't remember. There's something about Miss Busby. And she is, there's a whole series, I think I've read three, I think that's all they have on audio right now. Um, but she has a kind of a feel of, a little bit of Miss Marple-ishness to her, which is really, really kind of fun. I, I really like her, I like her character, I like everything about her, so she might be, it's one of those three. We're going to go with that. <laughs> a book that made you cry. Okay, I'm not much of a crier, but I did choke up at the end of this a bit. I mean, for me, that's almost ugly sob. You know, I don't, I don't choke up much. Um, usually, it takes heroism. I didn't. I, I none of the books I've read have a whole lot of that in it this year, but this one, yeah, that was that was beautiful. And so I'm gonna go with that, but I don't know. And then a book that made you happy. And this is like number 11. Yeah. Book that made you happy. Definitely Catherine Wentworth. I just found this book delightful. It was, it's like the best of Stevenson in, in the sense of, it's not her best book per se, but the best of how she does things, you know, where she just creates these characters and these situations and then just this Simple domestic bliss, even when it's not blissful. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it is just, she does it so well. Just the everyday, the ordinary, and yeah. Make something extraordinary out of it. I think that would be a good way of putting that. Okay. And then the most beautiful book you've received or bought so far this year. Okay. I had a really hard time with this one. So I have... I have a stack of them. I'm not kidding you. I have uh, two, four, I have five here. Um, I did get this really beautiful copy of The Rosemary Tree by Elizabeth Googe. I thought it was just 
beautiful and I got it for like, I don't know, eight bucks or something like that. There was that one. I can't say it's necessarily the most beautiful, but I felt like it needed to be shown off one more time. I would say the inside of Saving Ellipsis is the most beautiful inside, almost. Because it just, it's so much fun. It's illustrated and it's got some funky topography and it's just, it's such a neat book. The outside is pretty. I mean, it is pretty. But the inside is really what I found extraordinary on that one. I'm going to say spines, though. Let me look at that spine. Yeah. Spines, though. I got to say, the Agency for Scandal has the most beautiful spine. Every time I look at it, I reach for it. And it, it doesn't even seem to kind of fit the story. And yet, it does. I feel like... Yeah, so even the even the chapter covers are pretty. I, I, I did it because every time I see the sign, I pull it out. The front is pretty, but the spine just, I don't know, I liked it. So I had to share it. Because Barbara, I mean, look at that. It's so beautiful. Um, the inside is just Barbara Cooney. It's all about the illustrator. Uh, Miss Rumpheus and the Oxcart Man, and she did Chanticleer. Um, but yeah, so definitely, I love that they did this for the UPC. It makes me so happy. So that one is beautiful. But then when I came out here, I found this one. And I'm only five chapters in, I think. Yeah, I'm only I'm only on chapter five. But I love it so far. It's super cute. It's kind of kind of a boring otherwise, but yeah, so whatever. But <laughs> too much fun, too much fun. So I'm going to say, I'm actually going to say that this is, I think this is my most beautiful cover. Although I would say Googe is right up next to it. But I'm actually going to say this one. Because I just, every time I look at it, I bought this as a cover buy. And then after I hit submit, I went back and read it about it really fast. <laughs> because I was like, I don't even know what it's about. What if I don't like it? But it sounds fascinating. And it's about, um, it says a boy, a typewriter, and the stories they hold. And yeah, so she, the, this, she, I don't, I think she, the typewriter is a he, but whatever. The typewriter remembers everything that's ever been typed on there and now somebody is missing and the typewriter is going to start telling stories to try to help them find so I mean <clears throat> it sounds super fun and then okay number 13 I feel like is torture yeah number 13 is torture and I'm not sure I'm willing to answer it because I'm like, wait a minute, what? Um, <laughs> but I do have a cheat answer. And so I might go with that. So my answer, the question is, um, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? What kind of question is that? All of them, right? I mean, come on. I mean, I, really? So I thought about it and then I looked over and I have my Palliser box set there. And I remember that, oh, this is the year of Trollope. I'm almost done with the sixth and final book of the Farsichir Chronicles. So now I'll do the Pallisers. And I keep wanting to put a T in there. It's very hard not to. And so that'll be the next six months. So I, that, right? But then that made me look up. And I'm like, yeah, but I also have the rest of my Chantal Reads All Day. So I've got six books up there, too. And oh, by the way, what about the Buzzword Readathon or Buzzathon or the Buzzwordathon or the Buzz or whatever or Challenge? The Buzzword Challenge? I don't know what you call that thing, but the buzzes and the words. I got a do's. <laughs> And so there's six more books from that. And what, um, Wolf by Wolf, I'm doing for that one. 
So I'm going to I'm going to say I need to do my challenge books. I have 3 major challenges this year. I have my Trollop, I have my Chantal Reads All Day, and I have the Buzzwords. So those are the ones I need to read because the rest I just get to read. And um, I get to read those too. I mean, I chose them because I want to read them. It's not like I chose books I didn't want to read, right? And if I don't enjoy the Palisers, I will not be finishing them. Those are an easy DNF for me. If, I, if I'm not enjoying them, I'll put them on a shelf and I'll try in a couple of years. I'm totally down with that. Um, because, especially with that, like with the Gluges, there, were, there, there was at least two I DNF'd, I think. And one I forced myself, or two I forced myself to finish. But they weren't all one series. So if I get into one of these and I'm like, oh, I don't want to finish it. I have to I have to DNF the series. And so I will. And I'm okay with that. So I do want to circle back to um, favorite book this year. Best book. No, not favorite book. The best book you've read this year. I didn't mention uh, The Curate's Awakening, Thomas Wingate, the, the first book in this book. And that was a mistake because even more than Emma and the Reasons, that book. So um, technically that would be my, uh, the best book I've read this year. And it doesn't say one I haven't read before. So technically that would be, but for books I have not read this year, I'm staying with Emma and the Reasons. So that's what I got for you today. Um, I loved it. Before I had the channel, I would always do these in the comments. I would put all my books in there because it was just fun to do it along. Do it, you do it. Put your answers in there. Or if you have a channel and you haven't done this one, do it because I found this really fun. I it, it, I don't understand the title. What what's what's freaking out about this? I don't know. But except for that last question, what do you you know expect? To, <laughs> what do you have to finish this year? Okay, maybe. But I don't know. It's kind of a stretch, don't you think? I think it's a stretch but um on instagram this week a bunch of authors are doing bookish confessions and they want everyone to do it with them and i'm going to be doing at least one a day maybe more and i will have giveaways many of us will have giveaways there'll be giveaways at least every day but a bunch of christian fiction authors are doing this and so if you're on instagram i'm just flinging my shoe around if you are instagram if you are Instagram, yes. If you are Instagram, then you get no. Uh, if you're on Instagram, pay attention. I know Joanna Davison Politano is one because she's the one in charge, and I can't remember anyone else. <laughs> but I'll be doing it. She'll be doing it. There will be giveaways. I know a couple of people said, "Oh, I can do Tuesday. I can do Wednesday." I'm probably going to give a book away every day. I think that's what I'm going to do. And so it's going to be fun. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, I've got to go record some of my bookish confessions. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I'll see you Thursday with something. I, 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 I make no promises because that's just not working. So if you're curious about what I'm reading right now, I am partway through all of these books. I'm reading about five chapters a day in all of them. <laughs> Okay, that's not true. One of them, I'm only reading one or two. But, um, yeah, I'm reading a few books. <laughs> um, doing at least five chapters a day in this one. And this one-ish, this one has, like, chapters within parts. And so I, I just do wherever is easy to, to follow. So if it ends early, then I stop. Like, tonight, I think I only read three because it started a new part. And the chapter numbers start over. And that just made it all really confusing. So, um, but otherwise I'm doing five. I haven't read tonight's on that one. And this one I'm only doing one or two a day. But the, yeah, I'm in the middle of all of these because reasons. And you know what? I'm going to finish them all by the end of the week. I have no doubt about it. And that means that I will have read my entire book haul TBR. Isn't that cool? So yeah. This is what I'm in the middle of. What you reading this week? <laughs>
I'll talk to you later.